Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Pam. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this really adorable little car fern. Isn't that cute? This tutorial is available in my Etsy shop for goodness keepsakes and the link is in the description box below. So without further ado, let me show you how I make this adorable little car fern. So the first thing we're gonna do is work on these little fern fronds. So you're gonna need an H hook for this whole project. For the fern fronds, you need whatever kind of green you want. I believe this is red heart tea leaf. I'm gonna start by leaving myself about a six inch tail and make a slip knot. And we're gonna begin by chaining nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to slip stitch five times. Now, how you slip stitch is kind of important because a lot of people slip stitch or work in just the back loop. I work under the back and bottom loop going in between the V like this. And what that does is make for a tighter slip stitch. Then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Then in the second chain from the hook, slip stitch four times. Chain five again. One, two, three, four, five. Again, starting in the second chain from the hook, slip stitch four times. One more time, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and slip stitch back four times. One, two, three, four. Now we're gonna chain four and slip stitch back three times, starting in the second chain from the hook. One, two, three. Do that again. One, two, three, four chains. One, two, three slip stitches. One more time. One, two, three, four. And then slip stitch three times. One, two, three. Now chain three. One, two, three. And in the second chain from the hook, slip stitch two times, two. Again, chain three, one, two, three. Starting in the second chain from the hook, slip stitch two times, one, two. Do it again, one, two, three, slip stitch twice. This here is going to be your point. You're now gonna be working down the other side. And it starts by doing basically the same exact thing again. So we've got a set of three, chain three, slip stitch two. We're going to do a fourth one. One, two, three, and slip stitch twice. One, two. Now we're actually going to be joining in between all these slip stitches, starting in the third one. So here's the first one. One, two, three. We're going to join there with a slip stitch. So just kind of shove right into that space and slip stitch and you'll see you end up with this sort of cross. Here's your tip. There's the first of the other side. Chain three. Slip stitch twice. And then work into the next space. So we just worked into this space. We're going to work into this one now. Now we're going to chain four, one, two, three, four, and starting in the second chain from the hook, we're gonna slip stitch three times. One, two, 
three. This gets kind of finicky to work with because it wants to curl up and get in the way. I just sort of fold it back out of the way until I'm ready to do my next slip stitch. So you can see we joined into this one, so we're going to go into the next one with a slip stitch. Repeat, chain four, one, two, three, four. Slip stitch three times. And then go into the next space with another slip stitch. Now we're going to do that one more time. Chain four, one, two, three, four. Slip stitch three times. And then slip stitch to the next space. And by this point, we have two with two slip stitches and three with three slip stitches. We're now going to be working on sets of four, which means now we need to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five with four slip stitches starting in the second chain from the hook. Go into that next space there with a slip stitch and repeat one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four slip stitches and slip stitch to join. Chain five, slip stitch four times. slip stitch in between to join. Now we're going to do one more, but this one is going to be a chain six with five slip stitches. So three, four, five, six chains and slip stitch back five times. Four. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is go right here, right on the other side of here, and just do a slip stitch. And slip stitch three more times up to the end. One, two, three. I'm just gonna chain one and cut a tail that's about equal in length. And there's my frond. So you just need to do this five more times so that you have five all together which now I have. I cheated, I already did it. Let me show you how to make the dirt now. Now for the dirt, we're gonna start with something called a magic ring. It's going to make adding your fronds to the dirt a whole lot easier. So start with the tail resting over top two fingers, hold it with your thumb and make a sort of X where it goes away from you and then towards you. Then put your hook under this bottom one over this one, bring it up, and then grab that yarn and make a little slip knot. There's a magic ring. If you know a better way to do a magic ring, you can do a magic ring however you want. Let me show you that one more time. So I leave a, a nice long tail, make an X by going away from me and then towards me, go under the bottom yarn, over the top one, and then grab that yarn again. Ta-da, magic ring. And then chain two. Hi, baby. Now we're into this magic ring. We're going to add nine double crochets. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight and nine. Whoopsies. And nine. <laughs> what you want, baby? Outside. You can't be naked to play outside. You need clothes on. Go get clothes. Holtwood, those are Holtwood shoes. Go get clothes. 
So what you're going to do is cinch this down, but leave yourself a, you know, a big enough hole that you can get like a fingertip through. Bring these ends together and where you've got your initial chain, go into the top chain and slip stitch. Do not worry about tightening this yet. Chain two. And starting in this next stitch, we're going to do two double crochet in each stitch around until we get back to the beginning. So two in there. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, one, two, and then what happens when we get back to the beginning, this chain two counts as our first double crochet, and it goes into this stitch here. You can see that last stitch there has that chain two. So we're going to put one double crochet into this stitch, and then join to the top of our chain two with a slip stitch. That should give you 20 stitches around. Now we're simply going to chain two and put one double crochet in each stitch around, being careful not to put an additional one in this stitch here because this chain two goes to that stitch. So one double crochet in each stitch around. All right, see how this, we've still got this stitch here, but that stitch is part of the chain two. So we're just going to slip stitch to the chain two. We're not gonna work in that, see? Chain two, go around again. All right, slip stitch to join. So we've got our initial row. <laughs> two, two. We've got our initial row, two in each stitch, and then so far we've got two where we've just gone around once. We're gonna do that one more time.
So here we are back at the beginning again. See this goes into this stitch so we're just going to slip stitch to join and then we're going to pause a minute. I'm going to pull my loop loose so I don't lose my loop and I'm going to show you how to fish these in and the easiest way to do that is going to be with an oversized crochet hook. My favorite to use is this one. It's so pretty. Um, it's a P hook. So now we're going to get our fronds and I'm just going to kind of stack them so that their tails all line up. I want all of their tails to be pretty much even like that. And once you got that lined up, you're going to insert your hook from the inside to the outside like so. Hook all those tails <laughs> and push them, pull them in. See? That certainly makes it easier. At this point, now that I've got my tails in, I'm actually going to invert this temporarily, like so. And I'm going to make sure that I can start to see the beginning of the chains coming through. I'm going to grab my starting brown tail and I'm going to cinch that shut. But be careful because the first time I did this, I accidentally popped my yarn off. That was very disappointing. What's the matter, baby? You're still naked. You need clothes. Go get a shirt and some pants. So once you got that tight, without being so tight that you pop the yarn, grab all your tails, twist them. I like to twist them around two fingers, bring the tails between my two fingers and fish them through. And then push down on the knot while I pull the tails so I can push the knot up against the dirt. You want the pants on? Okay, one second. Go find your other sandal. You have two feet, you need two shoes. Where's your other sandal? Go get it. <laughs> so once you've got that tied up in a knot, you can fish this back in and just tuck all those tails in. They can just hang out in there. That's not going to hurt a thing. Grab our crochet hook, our loop, tighten things back up, and we're ready to continue. So for the next row, we're going to chain two. We're going to double crochet in the first stitch. And when we come back around to join, we're going to join to the top of this double crochet, not the chain two. We're going to double crochet two together nine times. And that's easy to do. You just work like the first half of a double crochet in one stitch and the first half of, of a double crochet in the next stitch, then yarn over and pull through everything. And then we're going to slip stitch not to the chain two but the top of the very first double crochet i know this yarn's kind of hard to see because it's dark and then we're just going to do like a chain one cut leave yourself like a five or six inch tail it's actually probably more like four inches honestly it's all you really need is like four inches leave yourself about a four inch tail and before we finish this off we're going to stuff it you could, uh, so many people have suggested it, and my friend even suggested it when I first made these, that you could put potpourri in there if you wanted. Uh, I'm going to opt for polyfill. Probably about this much polyfill. Um, you don't want to overstuff this, for sure. You just want it to conform, to have some basic shape. Like, that's definitely more than enough. That's almost too much, but it'll be fine. You're going to push it down in there, compact it a little bit. Now to finish this off is really simple. You can use a needle for this. I just use my crochet hook because I'm lazy. Um, either go from inside to out or outside to in. It doesn't really matter. Just pick one way and do it consistently that way. And just go to each stitch and drag your tail through it. 
So I'm doing where I insert my hook from outside to in and drag the yarn from inside to out. Go to the next stitch, drag the yarn out, go to the next stitch, drag the yarn out, go to the next stitch, drag the yarn out, go to the next stitch, drag the yarn out, and do that until I get back to the beginning. About right here. And then cinch and get in there <laughs> and cinch it shut. Then what I do is I kind of go underneath one of these stitches and tie a knot. And then fish the tail in if you'd like. Honestly, if you're feeling lazy, you almost don't even really have to because it's going on the inside. No one's really going to see it. But there's your fern. Now we just got to make the basket for it. So let's get started on that. I'm going to make the basket out of this color. In my pattern, I used a tan color. But I'm going to use this pretty, like, Aran color, I think it's called. I can't remember. And this just starts with a pretty, uh, a typical slip knot. Begin by chain three. And in the third chain from the hook, which is the first chain you made, put nine double crochets in there. And then join to your initial, the top of your chain that you've got 10 stitches around. Chain two and put two double crochets in each stitch starting in the next one. So I put two double crochets in here and in each stitch around. And then there's the stitch that the chain two is part of. So we're going to work one double crochet into that stitch and then join to the top of the chain two. Now chain one and turn. What you're going to do is work into these bottom loops. So you have here your two top loops. And this here is your bottom loop. And the first one is right here. So what we're going to do, and in this pattern, you'll, you might be wondering what's up with the single crochet chain one. I'm using that to count as a double crochet, and that's just to position your post where it's supposed to be. So I find the easiest way to get in there is to go between the posts and kind of hook that bottom loop. And you're going to start with a single crochet and a chain one, and that's going to count as your first double crochet. It's a little bit bulky, but it'll work. So then you're going to double crochet 19 more times in this bottom loop here. So if you're not able to get the loop easily, go between the posts and kind of hook that bottom loop. And then finish your double crochet. You'll find as you start to do it, the whole thing will want to kind of bend, sort of like bending on its own and making that loop sort of stick up a little.
but I find it easiest to go between and sort of hook it with my crochet hook. Now that we're back to the beginning, you can see here's our single crochet and our chain one. We're going to slip stitch to the top of the chain one, and we're going to chain one turn. So that now the outside is facing out, and you can kind of stretch your stitches a little bit. It'll make everything lay nice, and look how, how pretty that is. In the pattern, it tells you to single crochet between the posts and chain one, and that counts as your first double crochet. So you go between the posts right here and just work a single crochet and chain one and that counts as your first double crochet and then just double crochet in between the posts so not working in this space but in between the posts going all the way around until you're back to where you started So we're going to go in this space here is our last space that we have to work in between and here's our single crochet and our chain one we're going to join to the chain one and then we're going to do two more rows where we chain one single crochet between the posts and chain one again and that's going to count that the single crochet and chain one will count as our first double crochet. You don't have to do that. You could just slip stitch and chain two if you feel like doing that. This is just the way I do it and how I wrote it because I don't know. Like I just, that's just how I felt like doing it. <laughs> I just like the way it looks a little bit better personally. But if you don't like it, that's fine. You can just do it the traditional way where you slip stitch and chain a few. And actually I can show you how to do that with the next row if you'd like me to. In fact, I think I will just in case you don't like the look of it for some reason. I keep scooching over trying to run away from that harsh sunlight. <laughs> uh, alternative to the chain one single crochet chain one is to simply, when you're finished your row, slip stitch in between the space and just chain two or three, whichever you feel like doing. And that works too. Some might think that looks better and maybe it does. <laughs> Um, in fact, I don't even know. I don't always chain one either. Sometimes I literally just go right into doing a single crochet chain one without doing the chain one beforehand. Anyways, so we're going to do one more row of double crocheting in between each post going around.
So we're going to join here. And I kind of like this basket because it's got a little bit of a different woven look to it. Now we're going to do another row. This row is going to be single crochets between the posts as well. So it's just a regular chain one and then single crochet between each post going around. Now one thing about these basket patterns, just FYI, is that if, if you get bulky yarn and a larger hook and use the same exact pattern, you could make Easter baskets or something. Anyway, so slip stitch to your first single crochet to join, chain one, and now we've got one more row for the basket. We're going to do a reverse single crochet or what's also called a crab stitch going around. So we're going to go into this stitch here and then draw up a loop yarn over and pull through so it's exactly like doing a single crochet but you're doing it in reverse and it feels weird because you've got your loops going all kinds of funny ways but that's kind of the point because that's what gives it that really neat looking decorative twist look So you're going backwards around. Also, my pattern tells you to um, cut and tie and then join to do a separate strap. I'm going to show you how I do it where you don't have to do that. You can do that if you're more comfortable with that. The instructions are in my pattern. But I'm going to show you how I do these straps, the hanging straps, without um, having to cut and tie. Once I get back to the beginning here... I'm going to turn my work so that I can see the inside. I'm going to reach down here and just kind of grab a section of my row beneath and slip stitch there. And I'm going to immediately start my chain 30 for the first strap. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six seven eight nine twenty one two three four five six seven eight nine thirty chain thirty you can fold it in half to find the spot directly across and what i do is get underneath the row inside down a bit and just slip stitch it to join and then instead of cutting and tying and joining opposite, I just slip stitch my way over. So I go between here, slip stitch, between here, slip stitch, between here, slip stitch, between here, slip stitch. Just try not to make your slip stitches too tight or it'll cinch up your basket like I'm doing. <laughs> Keep your slip stitches loose enough that um, your basket can be the size it needs to be. And slip stitch like five or six times or however many it takes for you to get about a quarter of the way around so you can work around like this. From here, just chain 30 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 20, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. And then you just go over the other one. Find the opposite side, which is right here. Go underneath. Join with a slip stitch. This is kind of awkward. <laughs> Um, and then what I do is I actually slip stitch one more time before I then just chain one cut and tie.
Doesn't have to be super threaded in. And there's your basket. Look at that. I love this basket. I think this particular basket looks very good in this sort of off-white creamy color. So to get your plant in, you just stuff it in. It's literally that simple. One frond here. So it goes two, one, two, one. And then I just kind of fix the little frondy fingers. <laughs> so it's laying nicer. And if it looks doesn't look voluminous enough for your liking, just add a little extra twist to them. It'll make them fluffier. So that's all there is to it. I love hanging this from a garment hook. I have these little, like it's right here. I have these little suction cups that you can stick to your window and hang it off a back window in your car. Or I've got S hooks. I've used S hooks to kind of hang it off of my, um, oh crap handles that people call them. <laughs> I actually don't have a garment hook in my car, either of my vehicles, so <laughs> I use S hooks to suspend them from the back. I find actually doing that's pretty nice because when you have it suction cup to the window, it's more prone to UV damage, but if you have it hanging from your garment hook, it's usually out of the direct sunlight and it's usually fine. Please do not put it in your rearview mirror. I'm not going to recommend it because I don't want anybody to get in trouble, so don't do it. So don't hang this from your rear view mirror. It could technically obstruct your view. And in many places, they're very strict about anything hanging from the rear view mirror. And I would hate for you to get a ticket because you put something really cute on your rear view mirror. So no rear view mirror, but make sure wherever you hang this up in your car that you have full range of vision. It doesn't obstruct your vision. You want to obviously be able to see so you can drive safe. And it would break me to pieces if I found out somebody got hurt because of a car plant. So thank you for watching my tutorial. If you need any help or if you need have any questions, just throw them in the comment section below. I'd love to help. Be sure to check me out on TikTok. My username is Pamela Lammy. So have a blessed day, everybody.